Now it's time for the Week in Review, where we take a look at the week's most outrageous footage from around the world. The first video we're going to show you is out of Maryland. A robbery suspect jumped into a crowded bus and then got into a shootout with police. The officials say the man you see tried robbing two people before he hopped into the bus. And when police pulled the bus over, the guy just opened fire. Passengers on board ducking for cover, fearing for their lives, eventually running for safety. One officer was injured, and a 21-year-old bystander was also hit in the gunfire. Police eventually shot and killed that suspect. No one else got hurt after that, though. Now to North Carolina, where a pregnant woman ran down a man with her car after she says he stole her purse. Let get out of the way! Yeah, that was right. This happened in a Walmart parking lot. The woman says she caught the man rummaging through her SUV, and when she confronted him, he ran away with her purse, and well, she went after him. And I came back out here, and he was with my purse and took off, and I took off after him. Me been five months pregnant. I chased a little ways and then come back, jumped in the car, throwed it in gear, and come across the curb and ran him over. I was not going to let him get away with it. It's not right. It's not fair. Yeah, the man was transported to the hospital after the incident with minor injuries, but officers charged him with felony breaking and entering. But get this, police charged the pregnant woman, too, with misdemeanor assault with a deadly weapon. I know, right? Well, a tornado caught on camera in Iowa. Check it out. formation there, right? The state was on high alert during the week after multiple tornado sightings. Residents in this area reported golf ball size hail and winds reaching 60 miles an hour. Thankfully, though, no serious injuries being reported. UPS forced one of its drivers to apologize after security cameras caught him throwing a package onto a man's porch. Yeah, right. The homeowner says he noticed his package was damaged, so he decided to check his doorbell camera. That's when he saw the delivery man walk toward his home, stop before the porch, and just throw the package the rest of the way. Just throws it like he's bowling or something. I, I so couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, like I said, it was angry, like, what the, you know? But at the same time, I'm laughing at myself, like, are you, did I just really watch that? Yeah, well, UPS says that driver no longer works with the company, and they are making sure drivers know packages are to be handled with care. Finally tonight, quick thinking from a Tennessee man saving a drowning fawn. You should be able to grab it. It's not going to kick. It won't bite either. Oh. There you go. A woman and her boyfriend were boating when they saw a baby deer struggling to keep its head above water. Rob Hirsch dove in the water, hooked the fawn onto a life jacket. The couple guided the deer back to shore and then turned it over to a wildlife officer. Breaking news tonight, a 53-year-old woman died this evening in a horse riding accident. The Hines County Sheriff's Department and first responders were on the scene on Smith Station Road, west of Edwards. This happened just after 6 p.m. Tonight, they have still not released the identity of that woman. Also, breaking news tonight in Hines County, authorities on the scene of a fully involved house fire. It's on Paul Williams Drive in Raymond. We have a crew there on the scene. We hope to bring you more information later in the broadcast. Now, though, let's head over to Nathan with our first look at your weather. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Major developments out of North Korea today. Good evening. I'm Scott Simmons. The nation claiming it has a powerful new nuclear bomb and can be loaded onto a long-range rocket today. The White House responding. ABC's Chuck Severson has more. All right, Scott, go back over to you for a minute or two. Sure, absolutely. We're continuing to track things down the Mississippi Gulf Coast as the storm continues to come ashore. Uh, David and Nathan talking about the real... Uh, issue that we deal with now as we watch this storm come across is the concern about storm surge as we talk about the geography of the storm it seems to be working the center of the state over towards the east side the jackson side uh, ross adams of course has been working in gulfport working from jones park and then he had to move inland uh, towards the emergency operations center he's now moved to a different location giving us a different vantage point of nate as it comes across in gulfport ross take it away ross adams 16 WAPT News. I understand, Ross. Stay with me a second as we have a little bit of a time delay on our live shot signal. Have you been seeing many people trying to drive around in this stuff? Actually, we have not, Scott, I can tell you, because the governor earlier today told people that you shouldn't go out and try to sightsee. You could be spending the rest of the weekend 
in the jailhouse. Scott, back to you. You're right, Ross. We always talk about the dangers for emergency management when they have to go out into that storm to rescue the person who decided to go out sightseeing, and then you have a, a big problem on your hands. We're continuing to get power outage update numbers, big numbers coming out of Harrison County, uh, well over 2,000. Don, could you give me that one more time? Good. Uh, producer Don Culpepper telling us they had more than 2,100 people without power in Harrison County. Luckily, they've gotten that power back on, but their number is 1,224 people without power. The problem growing over in Hancock County now, uh, more than 1,600 people reported now in the dark as the storm continues to wreak havoc down there. Pearl River County, a little further off the beaten path, as you know, not on the beach uh, in that row of counties, but right behind it. They're still at about 100, but we expect those numbers to keep coming in. Golden Nugget in Biloxi, as David alluded to, now having some flooding coming in on the Biloxi area, where Ross has been showing us the live images as we continue to look. I believe we are looking towards Jones Park in that pavilion right there. And folks, that's storm surge. If you know the lay of the land there, that's where the beach meets. There's a high level of concrete area. That water has now gone over that and is pushing further into shore, which you understand that is a, that's a good bit of storm surge right there, what we're talking about. As we talked about Katrina earlier, that was the real wind and water. That wind was pushing at just the right angle, as David talked about. And it pushed so much more water into the Mississippi Gulf Coast and those areas that really no area is able to handle that much storm surge. But now, in the wake of Katrina, they did so much improvement in the infrastructure there in Gulfport. Mayor Billy Hughes told me about this at extent, and they spent millions of dollars improving the drainage systems out there. Once the water comes on shore, it's on shore, but they'll be able to get it back out in better condition than they did before Katrina. A baby makes its debut at Ohio Zoo, and he's already a Facebook favorite. Why not? The Columbus Zoo's Asian small clawed otter pup Triton now exploring the habitat with his parents, two-month-old Triton, a strong swimmer, getting diving lessons from his mother, Asta. Asta encourages Triton to try new things, but his father, Oscar, has been a little hesitant to let Triton do things on his own. How do, how do they sleep? Go ahead. Asha. They sleep with their hands together so they don't float away. I when didn't they're know that. Yeah, it's the cutest thing. Nathan, one final check of weather, please. <laughs> I'm so thrown off because usually it's Scott. Now this time it's Ashley. Well, out there for Sunday, next chance rain arriving on Friday. We'll just let Ashley take us out. That's our broadcast. So thank you so much for watching. Join us back here tomorrow night. What she said.